Hi, 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 everyone. Hi, hi. Actually, the audio was, audio was, audio was uh, not there. So, good afternoon. As per your demand, uh, I have just scheduled this class for oral cancer. Uh, oral cancer per se is a very big topic, very big topic. But I will try to just, uh, just uh, shrink it to a version. Yes, which can be taught on YouTube. In my routine class, I take it for a very long time. But this is going to be a very small but crisp and important class and today we'll do oral cancer tomorrow we'll do the salivary gland tumors also so let us start with this and do not forget to take advantage of this three plus one offer yes let us move forward let us move forward and uh, let me start this session okay so salivary gland uh, oral cancer is a very 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 important topic let us talk about this oral cancers. You get a lot of questions from oral cancers and lot of questions are based on the miscellaneous concepts of oral cancer also. When we talk about oral cancer, just a minute. So let us talk about oral cancers. First of all, you get some miscellaneous. So let us discuss some miscellaneous. Yeah. So most common type, most common type. What is the answer? Come on, tell me the most common type answer is squamous cell cancer most common type is the squamous cell cancer yes most common site yes most common site if you talk about overall and and west the answer is same what is the answer yes it is the tongue answer is tongue and it is actually the lateral two-third part of the tongue the lateral two-third tongue yes lateral two-third of the tongue Remember the most common site in India? Yes. You remember Mukesh Harare when you go to movies? That's why in India we eat Rajnigandha, we eat Kamla Pasal, we eat Juma Kesri, what is that? Vimal, yeah. So we stuff it in this Jinjaiva Bakkal complex and just we enjoy. Mm, we, we have that special swag na, if you go to UP and Bihar, especially I belong from Kanpur. So I understand this thing more. But relatives don't want to talk. They don't want to talk to you. Why? Because when they talk to you, they might have to spit that gutka which is actually going to be matlab, more matlab, difficult affair for them. Yes. So uh, in India, yes, it's the buccal cavity. It's the buccal cavity. It's the buccal cavity. Yes. Pan Bahar. <laughs> Someone is telling all the brands now. They're all from, you know, all the, these Gutka makers are from Kanpur. All of them, all of them, even if they have settled down in any part of the world, they're all from Kanpur. Let us talk about, let us talk about the the prognostic factors, the prognosis, the prognosis. But see, the most important prognostic factor, the most important prognostic factor is the lymphovascular invasion. Yeah, lymphovascular invasion. So lymph node status, lymph node status is the most important prognostic factor. And therefore, based on this, we have studied a lot of tumors, how they have the spreading pattern and it has been seen, it has been seen that the best prognosis is associated with someone and worst prognosis is associated with someone can you tell me this best and worst best prognosis is of the buck uh, the heart palate cancer so ca heart palate do you know that ca heart palate has least incidence of lymphovascular invasion so lymphovascular invasion is the most important thing so ca heart palate has least incidence of this lymphovascular invasion and the most common cancer to show you lymphovascular invasion is the buccal cancer and that is why we don't have a very good prognosis of these oral cancers in countries like India. Yes, sir. Yes. Let us talk about some more miscellaneous items here. Yeah? More miscellaneous items. Miscellaneous. We are talking about miscellaneous only here. Yeah? If you talk about carcinoma of the lip, if you talk about carcinoma of the lip, where do you get these cancers? Yes, if you talk about the cancers of the lip, they can be located in the lower part of the lip, they can be located over the commissure, they can be located on the upper lip. So if you see their incidence wise, their incident, the incidence, but say lower lip, lower lip, this is the most common site. Yes, lower lip, 92% of the cancers are in the lower lip and amongst them SCC is going to rule. Then 
approximately 5 to 7 percent of the cancers 5 to 7 percent of the cancers yes this is the vermilion border yeah Nine, 5 to 7 percent of the cancers are in the upper lip and in the upper lip what is the most common cancer tell me tell me tell me yes something from b bcc basal cell cancer melanoma all these cancers occur on this yes apart from this you also have the corners involved and what are these known as this is known as commissural cancer so commissure less than 2% commissure and again SCC these corners are having the maximum risk of LVI and therefore amongst these cancers yes the commissural cancer the commissural cancer is having worse prognosis among CA lips and this commissural cancer because of its high tendency of this lymphovascular invasion students something about CA heart palate also when we talk about CA heart palate yes try to understand that this is associated with best prognosis one very important thing is SCC is the most common type but one more question you often get in this is have you heard of Kaposi sarcoma yes so what is the most common site what is the most common site for oral Kaposi the most common site for oral Kaposi the answer is again the heart palate so don't don't miscalculate this word heart palate ka sabse common cancer hota hai SCC par agar koi aap se puchta hai ki oral kaposi kahan par hoga answer is again heart palate one more very interesting thing that i am going to discuss with you about the CA tongue so these are all miscellaneous things that you should be knowing if you talk about CA tongue we know that SCC is the most common site SCC is the most common type SCC is the most common type and it is the lateral two-third which is the most common why it is so special is can you tell me what is this concept known as there is a tumor in the thyroid there is a tumor in the thyroid yes and you get few nodules in the lateral part of the neck yes and when you check these nodules this is also reflecting you a CA thyroid and then when we see the metastatic concept ideally the tumor should have first gone to the what the central neck but the central neck here is absolutely normal yes and here you are having the lateral neck involved the lateral neck is showing you the tumor how is this possible students it is possible only in case of skip metastasis very good very good this is possible in case of skip mets so you must have studied that papillary CA might show you a direct spread into the lateral part of the neck and this is known as skip mets similarly this phenomena of skip mets is also shown by the tongue cancer also is that clear or no so skip mets is also shown by CA tongue normally try to understand majority of the cancers they spread into the level 2 level 3 level uh, 4 level 2 level majority of the cancers they actually they above they remain above the territory of the supra uh, superior uh, uh, superior homohyoid remember majority of the oral cancers majority of the oral cancers if you talk about their spread it is to level 1 level 2 level 3 but try to understand try to understand this phenomena of yes it is also seen in bronchogenic cancers also oat cell thing it is also phenomena seen with CA tongue CA tongue can have isolated invasion isolated invasion to isolated spread to level 4 with level 1 2 3 being absolutely what normal so you should be aware of this point that CA tongue might show you what skip metastasis and therefore what is very important take home message whenever we do any surgery for CA oral cancers we generally do a SOHND but for oral cancers you require ESOHND so therefore ESOHND is done for CA tongue what do you mean by ESOHND but E stands for extended E stands for extended SOHND stands for supra supraomohyoid supra 
neck dissection, supra homohyoid neck dissection. So they are very important things, very important points. Yeah. Ye kis ke liye lagta hai? For CA tongue, why? Because of its tendency to show you skip metastasis. Let us now quickly understand what are the risk factors. What are the risk factors? Yes. If you talk about this, the first and the very important is tobacco. You know, tobacco is the most common, most important. Then you have alcohol. Tobacco alone is associated with four to eight times increase. Four to eight times increased risk. And alcohol up to one to two times increased risk. Do you know that if you enjoy tobacco with alcohol, so alcohol with smoke, but say the cumulative risk, the cumulative risk is 30 to 32 times. Do you know why the tobacco contains the tobacco contains these, uh, you can say the new matrix metalloproteinase, which actually cause the damage to the epithelium and alcohol is going to cause that mutation at this, you know, methylation. This is the first event, critical information of adenosine. So this is very important. Together, they are very important. Next is, you must have heard of this betel nut. Betel nut. Yes. Yes. Then, then, then. Even, even, even you can associate it with what? HPV. HPV can cause. Human papilloma virus can cause oral cancers. Again, but see, spicy food is not directly related. Spicy food is not. But see, pan masala. Now you will be laughing why sir is writing pan masala even books like Sabiston have yes acknowledged this term pan masala they have written yes they, they have written this word that a local mouth freshener used in Asian countries especially in India pan masala now try to understand the days are not far when you will have the brands also written this is this this pan masala this pan masala but take India is so popular hota ja rahe. yeah so supadi pan masala blah 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 next 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 but see, there are some more conditions, yes, more conditions like syphilis, syphilis, syphilis can cause, syphilis can cause, yes. But see, apart from this, there is a list of pre-malignant lesion also, pre-malignant lesion also. What are the pre-malignant lesions? We have erythroplakia, erythroplakia. This is the pre-malignant lesion, erythroplakia, yeah. Yes, you are right. Candidiasis is also. Candidiasis is also. Erythroplakia, if you talk about, we have leukoplakia. Leukoplakia. Now, what is to be remembered about them? I will discuss in one minute. Submucosal fibrosis. So, submucosal fibrosis is again very important. So, erythroplakia, leukoplakia, submucosal fibrosis. They are very important. Then, chronic, chronic candidiasis. Chronic candidiasis is again a very important term but see erythroplakia and leukoplakia they are commonly haunting terms if you talk about leukoplakia if you talk about leukoplakia it is a white fibrotic patch it's a white fibrotic patch now what is important about this leukoplakia the leukoplakia is nothing but pleomorphism yeah Protuberance or you can say uncontrolled proliferation. So what is the hallmark feature of this? You get to see on HPE, on HPE, you get to see parakeratosis, parakeratosis. Yes, you are right, absolutely right. That leukoplakia, in fact, is the most common pre-malignant lesion. Most common pre-malignant lesion is your leukoplakia. One again, very important thing that you have to remember students about leukoplakia is the leukoplakia is of three types. Yes, what are the three types of leukoplakia? One is a nodular leukoplakia, one is a diffuse leukoplakia, yes, and one is a speckled leukoplakia. Speckled leukoplakia, yes, speckled leukoplakia. Amongst the leukoplakia, it is the speckled variety which is the most pre-malignant. Most pre-malignant. Is that clear? Most pre-malignant. If you talk about erythroplakia, erythroplakia. When we talk about erythroplakia, it is a, it is a, you can say the next sequence of leukoplakia. Yeah. So it is a red velvety patch. It's a red velvety patch. And on HPE, you get to see dyskeratosis. So if you are still confused, which is more dangerous, try to understand until and unless the dysplasia happens, but say parakeratosis will not convert into a dyskeratosis. So para 
to disc. This is what is very, very, very important. And therefore, that erythroplakia is the most is, is the most pre-malignant lesion. Most pre-malignant lesion. Two point students on chronic submucosal fibrosis also. Chronic submucosal fibrosis. Now, chronic submucosal fibrosis, this is associated with irritants. Yes, this is associated with irritants. Now, what are these irritants? Yes, can you tell me? Smoking, this is smoke. Yes, spicy food, spicy food, and then ill fitting dentures. Ill fitting dentures. Yes, ill fitting dentures. Ill fitting dentures. A lot of things. Ill fitting dentures. All these things which can irritate. So whenever there is whenever there is irritation, whenever there is irritation, you expose them to chronic irritation, there is damage. Because of this damage, because of this damage, there will be healing. You know that healing will be followed with fibrosis, and this fibrosis, this fibrosis is ultimately the destination. But again, re-exposure to irritant, re-exposure to irritant will again cause this damage and this damage healing cycle will one fine day convert into dysplasia. Dysplasia. Very good. Very good. There will be fibrosis of the steroids and this is going to result in this trismus. So there are two classical features. There are two classical features. So there are, there are coffee. Okay, there are two classical classical uh, features that we get restricted opening of the jaw. What is this known as trismus? Trismus due to invasion of pterygoids. And then second is it is the bone or you can say bamboo-like fibrous tongue. What is that known as ankyloglossia? So ankylo ankyloglossia and trismus are the two cardinal features that we guess that we get. Yes, but see. Pohar, I have taken so many classes on this uh, Unacademy app, free, free. So don't worry, I have recently taken CA Thyroid also. You can go through this Unacademy uh, app or you can just download this app, use the code Surgery Live or Dr. Dixit, whatever. And you can get all these lectures for free, don't worry. Next is, let us talk about the approach. Yeah, approach. Whenever you have a patient with suspected oral malignancy whenever you have a patient with suspected oral malignancy how do you proceed let's say the first thing is biopsy two important points about biopsy if this is the lesion the biopsy should always be taken from the edge it should not be taken from the center why because center of the cancer will be having the necrotic content yes so necrotic content will be there and therefore you will get inconclusive so edge biopsy should be taken from edge Yes, tolvidine, tolvidine Jadev is an agent which is used for screening. So tolvidine is used for screening the oral cancers. When you have the suspicion, yes, you have to go for biopsy. Next is, next is. Now, once you have diagnosed, so investigation of choice will be for the diagnosis purpose will be biopsy. And this could be three types of biopsy. Either it could be incision or it could be excision biopsy or it may be a wedge or anything you want yeah now the next thing that you want is the extent how far it has gone for extent the investigation of choice is mri far better than cct mri is far better than a ct scan try to understand but say if in option you have the pet ct so the order will be PET CT better than MRI better than CCT. So try to understand if in options, if in option the PET is given, the PET, the option PET is given. Yes, this will always be the best option. You will mark this. So investigation of choice for evaluation of extent is going to be a radiology and PET CT if given in option will always be the answer. Next is, let us talk about the staging concept. The staging is also very, 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 very important. And nowadays we follow the AJCC 8. What was the transition from AJCC 7 to AJCC 8? That there was two things. One was depth of invasion. The depth of invasion has been added. The depth of invasion or DOI has been added. 
and the second is there is again a concept of ENE. -E. What is ENE? -E? Extra nodal extension. Extra nodal extension. So we have two concepts: extra nodal extension and ENE. -E. Now, when we talk about the staging, the T1 is same, less than or equal to two centimeter, or or depth of invasion less than or equal to five mm. If you talk about stage two cancers, more than two up to four centimeter or depth of invasion more than 5 up to 10 mm. So doctors up to 10 mm the cancers will be considered as T2, T2. Let us talk about T3 more than 4 centimeter. Now the previous staging, the previous staging for the oral cancer, the cancer used to be classified as T3 if it was 4 to 6. Now the 6 category has been removed or if it is depth is more than 10 mm. T4 is defined as if it is into local invasion so into local structures but say local structures if it is it is t4 like pterygoids tongue skin this is all t4 now let us go for the students if you read this this staging in the books it is quite it is quite confusing so it becomes very difficult to remember i'm just summarizing i'm removing the clutter and take giving you the essence when we talk about the n when you talk about the n we have n1 defined as solitary or single lymph node yeah solitary lymph node less than or equal to three centimeter the size is the most important thing n2 if you talk about n2 if you talk about these are solitary lymph nodes solitary lymph nodes more than three centimeter but less than or equal to six centimeter or you can say this is n2a to be more specific we have n2b these are multiple lymph nodes multiple lymph nodes but none of them more than 6 cm, 6 cm. We have N2C. What is N2C? This is bilateral lymph nodes, bilateral lymph nodes, but none of them more than 6 cm. Students, what is N3? N3 is either solitary or multiple, solitary or multiple lymph nodes more than 6 cm. Students, I am not teaching you what is N3A, N3B always remember one thing that less than three centimeter if extra nodal extension is positive it is a n2 it is a n2 if le more than three centimeter extra nodal extension is positive it is a n3 just remember it like this remove the clutter try to understand the maximum next is and the last thing is how we manage them the treatment part the treatment of pre malignant lesion is one the treatment of cancer is one if you talk about pre malignant lesion the treatment is simple straightforward that is wide local excision with 0.5 centimeter margin with 0.5 centimeter margin either you do this or you can go for simple radiotherapy also simple you can go for radiotherapy either radiotherapy so pre malignant lesion you can do this or there are other ways of ablation also no lymphatic dissection nothing Next is what is the management of these cancers? If it is a cancer, wide local excision with 1 to 2 centimeter margin. Not only this, along with this, you will go for SOHND, supra omohyoid neck dissection, where we actually take the lymph nodes, level 1, 2, 3 lymph nodes are to be removed. Then, when will you go for radiotherapy in these cancers? Yes, so plus minus radiotherapy, plus minus chemotherapy. Remember, oral cancers may sare patients ko chemotherapy nahi lagti hai. Chemo kin ko denge? Yes, this is for advanced cancer. This is for advanced cancer. We prefer to use 5 fluorouracil. We prefer to use cisplatin. We use, prefer to use epirubicin, doxorubicin. These are the agents that we actually use only for advanced. Now, what are the indications for radiotherapy? They are also important. T3 and above any tumor with t3 and above status needs radiotherapy second is depth of invasion irrespective of the t if it is more than equal to 4 mm third is if the lymph nodes are positive you have to go for if the tumor free margin that you tried to salvage a margin of 1 centimeter if the tumor free margin is less than 1 centimeter you have to and the last is the last is that if it is a case of relapse, if it is a case of relapse, you have to go for it. 
Now, what is supra umohyoid neck dissection? I hope you know. Taking this to be the hyoid, taking this to be hyoid, and this is the center line. This is the mandible. Here you have here you have the digastric muscles. Here you have the styloid process. These are the strap muscles that we have. Here you have the sternum. Yes, you have the sternum. Here you have the clavicle. Let us quickly see this. Here you have the clavicle. These are your sternocleidomastoid. This is your trapezius. Sternocleidomastoid trapezius. Sternocleidomastoid trapezius. Yes. And then this is the stylohyoid that you are talking about. This is the stylohyoid muscle that you are talking about. So let us see quickly. This is this is 1A. This is 1A. So this is anterior belly of diagastric. This is posterior belly of diagastric. Yeah. Anterior belly and posterior belly. Yes, yes, is ours. Hi. So anterior belly, this is the anterior diagastric. This is the posterior. So 1A, 1B. Yeah. At the level of at the level of hyoid, if you go parallel to the sternocleidomastoid, this is level 2. Taking the reference at the level of cricoid, if you go up to the sternocleidomastoid, this is level 3. Below and above the clavicle, it is level 4. Yes. Then we have level 5. Students, same thing. What is this? This is the inferior belly of homohyoid. And this is the superior belly of homohyoid. So if you see this is the superior belly of homohyoid muscle. So what will be the lymph nodes which would be resected here? But say this is level 4, this is level 3, this is level 2. So obviously, obviously it has to be level 1, level 2, level 3 which have to be removed. In case of only in case of tongue cancer you remove the fourth also. Yes sir, irrespective of the size lymph nodal invasion extra nodal but say no if it is less than three if it is less than three centimeter we consider extra nodal invasion in a lymph node with less than three centimeter size we consider it as as n2 n2 not n3 now there are lot of further classification because this concept of extra nodal uh, extension came and then the controversy started with micro metastasis less than 2 mm extension more than 2 mm extension there are a lot of updates in that because there's a one group of one one school of thought jo hai, ki if it is extra nodal it is automatically n3 then came a lot of uh, diversification in these concepts so let us see how agcc comes with a new staging or in the further ninth version how they modify it but right now we take it like this only so there are many school of thoughts which have some discrepancy on this concept. Maybe in the coming uh, coming years they might uh, remove this uh, bias I would say. So this was all about the oral cancer students. I hope you enjoyed. Yes. And still if you have not joined my telegram group. You can surgery dada is the name of my telegram group. SX dada. SX space dada is the name of my telegram group. You can join this group. And I keep on updating lot of interesting cases and about the classes and important schedules remember don't forget to subscribe me on an academy and use the code surgery live do subscribe just download the app and or you can use surgery dada uh, uh, dr dikshit also dr dikshit also yes dr dikshit so till then bye bye we this was a small session tomorrow we'll have again a small session on oral cancers till then i hope you enjoyed do give your comments in the feedbacks uh, in the comment section feedbacks in yes but this sab kuch yahi par le lo notes bhi le lo pdf bhi le lo fir join kyu karoge an academy kyu join karoge notes bhi le lo sab kuch yahi par le lo ha yes theek hai sare classes bhi yahi youtube pe kara lo <laughs> this is just to give you a feed if you are enjoying this much on the an academy youtube channel and when you join the platform, you can imagine this is the tip of iceberg. The iceberg is still waiting for you in the platform.